three, two, one, boom. And we are back to another episode of Crowd Gamers. This episode is sponsored by Zen Real Clothing Co. Pick up your tees and or accessories at zenrealclothingco.com or check out the free playlists on Zen Real Radio. All of it available at zenrealclothingco.com. Um, make sure if you're using, if you're going to check out, use offer code SG Podcast for 20% off select items. Okay, so prior to what we're about to talk about, uh, I was, we were actually discussing this yesterday as we were hanging out, and I was thinking, like, okay, we'll just do a puff piece, right? Like a technology related, like, podcast, you know? Mm-hmm. And then, like, it got me really thinking about, like I went home and I was like thinking about uh, maybe this is not the right time because I was thinking of, all right so so primarily that this came about because um, you know like the the blackout Tuesday thing yeah so like there was the blackout Tuesday and then there's the um, muted campaign which is like uh, elevate um, um, elevate melanated voices something like that that the hashtag. So um, I was doing that one, which is like you you leave the airways free for uh, seven days so that, you know, only like Black Lives Matter related content appears in the feed. Right. And a lot of people were doing that. And then like Blackout Tuesday. So I saw like some companies doing it and I was like pretty impressed. But then it got me thinking, like, what happens after this is done? You know, like when like on Monday when I'm like, okay, I'll, I'll start posting again. Is it like everything's back to normal? You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And like, it, it felt kind of weird too, because I saw like all this blackout Tuesday stuff. And like so many people like on my feed were like, oh, super in support of it. You know, they're making these t-shirts like, like, oh, if you buy this, you know, all the profits will go to these charities, et cetera, et cetera. And then the next day, which is like mm-hmm. Wednesday, boom everything back to normal back to like self-promotion and like it's almost like we forgot you know what i mean it was like it was like um for me it it felt more like important than it was expressed on social media you know yeah and like it's and, and then that got me thinking i was like all right so like what am i going to start posting and it's like to to go back to the normal seems very uh like you're 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 breaking up a bit oh like a lot i can't really hear what you're saying oh really right okay so my bad maybe it's my internet no i'm a 5g um uh still still bad uh you just continue let's see oh okay okay um so so yeah so i was like okay everyone just like went back to normal right the next day and then it got me thinking like like if if i also went back to normal it's like what does that mean for like did it really matter to you did you really care you know what i'm saying Mm -hmm. yeah Yeah. and like and like but but there are some people that are still posting like you know like jason momoa he's doing a bunch like push a t all this stuff like they're really constantly like as the protests continue on their continuing on of their coverage you know and their promotion of it right yeah yeah so like it's it's a weird it's a weird like millennial thing you know that we we we're super active on social but then we don't we don't follow it up past the hashtag date right you know what i mean like i don't know like what <laughs> what, what do you feel about that I mean, uh, I I don't know. Like, it is uh, the thing is it that became more popular than Black Lives Matter on the day of Black Two, like right? Like, that was what was more talked about versus actually what was the actual news about it. Right. Totally. I I agree with you. Like, and then, and then the 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 mistake of. But I mean, this is pretty obvious for like social media. If you like hashtag Black Lives Matter, then you click on that feed and it's all just like black squares. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's, it's yeah, like, and that, and, mm-hmm. and that was happening a lot, right? On that day too. So it was like, I don't know if that message was the right way of doing it necessarily. Like it really work as to what they wanted it to, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I totally get what you're saying. 
I mean, I feel that too. And it's like, but, but also at the same time, it's like, mm-hmm. we, what you see on social media is like, like the people like heavily posting about it are the ones like directly in it, you know? So like, if you see in like the Canadian posts, it's like, it's not the same response that you're seeing in America. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, like. So was this thing mm-hmm. only on, I guess, Instagram? Um, I mean, that's where I, like, I feel like all the other platforms are dead. <laughs> like to me, to me, like, I don't, I don't look at Facebook too much. I saw nobody do it on Facebook and also for Twitter. Um, I didn't see it. Well, yeah, Twitter, it, it makes sense. Cause it, I think it is only for Instagram. Because- Right. Oh, but it's because not, what? Sorry, say it again. I think it's only for Instagram because of it's. It's just a black um, square. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. So it's not, not not a Twitter. I would say. Right. But I didn't see it on Twitter. Yeah. Okay. But the, in, totally. Like, but the but the, like the discussion of uh, the issue with it or whatever was like that was going on. On Twitter. Yeah, like the discussion of why it's not is not is. Um, why it wasn't working or um, that it was taking over a hashtag that uh, like it didn't do what it was intended to do right 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 totally totally and and that's I think that's why they they have that hashtag like blackout Tuesday you know so then all... yeah I know I know but then people would do both right uh, you're, you're it's it's like I don't know I, like a lot of people don't get that information they just like the post about it then they're like okay i'll do that too right like that. and then not really know the full information right so totally. To totally totally um it is cutting out oddly I yeah wonder, i wonder if that's like your internet my internet i mean i'm on 5g are you when you keep saying 5G, people think that we have 5G. There's no 5G. <laughs> it's it's just named 5G, so I'm like, okay. <laughs> yeah. Are are you are you in like a different part of the house? Maybe my computer's just like oh, I closed all the other programs. This is no, there's, there's there's nothing like that here. I don't know. It could be like the ser- like to be like the server could be very busy that could cause these sort of things. I don't know. Uh, oh, oh, because of what's going on right now. No, not necessarily what's going on. I don't know, like, the, the back end of stuff. Because we didn't have this issue before. Yeah, no, no, it's kind of weird. All right, whatever, we'll we'll soldier through and we'll see uh, We'll see if we cut out. Sorry if you're listening to this. It's a little choppy because of the internet. Um, okay, so, so that being said, I was thinking that, you know, I because prior to, prior to this whole COVID thing, I was doing, like, primarily like motivational stuff and like young yoda and like I'll, I'll still do that but like with the like the daily workouts and stuff it just seems so like superficial now you know what i mean like it made sense because it's like covid we're all at home but then like there's a way more pressing issue like i just didn't want to be like everyone else where where like you jump back on and it's like business as usual you know what i mean it, it mm-hmm. seems it seems weird it's like it's like if you like, how could you not address what's going Like, how could you not connect what's going on with what you're doing? And it just makes you seem tone deaf. Like, everyone that I see that are posting back to normal, it's like, it just feels super tone deaf to me, you know? Or, or, uh, or, or disingenuous. Yeah. It seemed like you cared only as much as that hashtag mattered. Yeah, I think I think that's the I think that's the thing. Yeah, if you re- if you just posted it just for joining in kind of thing, and then not really, like, I, I, like that was it. And after that, there's nothing at all about it. Right. Uh, then yeah, it's 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 very disingenuous. But um, uh, I don't know. It's it's a difficult thing. Like social media and stuff is a very uh, it feels like it's a very like a selfish sort of thing like it's more about you versus <laughs> you know what i mean oh like, so social media yeah totally i i get what you're saying like self-promotion and stuff yeah 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 right right like, like i i can already feel it that it, like it 
that I don't know if you feel it, but it's like I'm getting less and less kind of coverage or, or on that uh, topic on all the prote- on the protests and stuff. Do you feel feel that like it's as the week is coming to an end? E- um, yeah. I mean, like I felt it the day after is very odd. Like, like literally the day mm-hmm. after, or not even the day after, because you can see when they posted, it's like a couple hours after. It ended. Right, right. It's like you're already posting yeah. about like self promotion stuff, and it's like very odd to like. I get it if you're like a meme account, or like, like I don't know, like. But still, even meme accounts are still posting about it. I don't know. It's yeah, but I I still I I don't know. Maybe it's again. This is what what your feed shows up like, right? Based on what you have been like. tapping. Yeah, totally, yeah. totally. So it's like I, I I don't feel like it's as much focused on it. Right. Maybe that's because people aren't posting about it, right? More people are posting about it. Whatever. Um. I don't know. Yeah. It's it's. Yeah. Like, like, like I, I, if anything, I think what people should really get out of it, because most of the people that are doing the are young people and I think if you really want the change or want to see the change is you have to go out and vote. Right, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. And and really if you don't vote after all this, it's um I don't know how things are changing gonna change because then like you can see the rhetoric that Trump has set, uh that does not comply with what Black Lives Matter want, right? Right. From, uh, so uh, I don't know. Um, it's uh, like they don't. Yeah, it's, uh, like this is it. Uh, this is a much more different level of um, like Black Lives Matter has been there for a, a while now, for a few years. Uh-huh. But there's been like pockets of when it became popular, and then it died down and stuff. But this one was a bit more like the world really got into it, uh, which was yeah, very totally. Um, very interesting to see that. Well, um, hold on. I'm just going to pause you really quick. And so if you're listening to this, uh, you're going to hear like an abrupt stop, but I'm going to pause this, restart my computer. And then hopefully, uh, it'll have fixed itself. Cause like my, my computer's like crying with the fan right now. All right. Oh. So you just, just give me like two seconds. I'm just going to restart my computer. Hopefully that will fix it. Cause I'm like, I don't really know what else it could be. Uh, so bear with us as we hit stop right now. Okay, we're back. Hopefully that fixed the issue. Shut down the computer. Fan stopped. Starting to kick back in. I don't know what's going on. And then I switched the Wi-Fi for all you tech people out there. Um, you going to say something? Was I? Oh, okay, never mind. I guess not. Okay, so uh, we left off with um, the fact that um, if it could feel disingenuous and if we don't vote... Um, nothing will change. Yeah, yeah. yeah like uh, like a lot of the stuff that the um, politicians are saying or whatnot, it's very much just platitudes at the moment. Totally, um, yeah. Right? Like, I, I, you can agree with the movement and things, but if nothing is really being done, then, like, that's... It's just platitudes then. Yeah, t- totally, totally. And so... So again, that that's an American specific thing because, uh, you know, yesterday Trudeau like took a knee, and like I know, I know we can say like, oh, he's just doing that for PR and stuff, but like, I, I don't know, he really won me over when he made marijuana legal because I was like, whoa, that's a big thing, you know. And then taking mm-hmm. this knee, it's like, okay, you're really listening to the people, like I feel, you know. Yeah, and that that's what I'm saying. That's why voting matters, right? Yeah, 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 totally. I mean, like, the only other person I could see, but, like, their track record hasn't really shown anything yet, is uh, Jagmeet Singh. I think that's his name, Jagmeet mm-hmm. Singh. Because, yeah. like, he, he's, like, very in touch. Like, he does, like, a lot of social media stuff, and I like that. But, um, but yeah, like, I don't know. I, what, I, what else has he done? I don't, I don't have, know. Uh, yeah, I don't know about, um, well, I, I guess I'll need to see more, but I wouldn't. I, I'm not really uh, like you can do the social media thing, but the, that's all you're doing to get the. I, like I get it. 
I, you're trying to gain votes, but it's uh, for me, it, it is again like it's like a gimmick. Actually, yeah, yeah, that's what I feel like that it is. Yeah. No, I, I agree with you. That that's why, like, for me, I like the I really like Trump as leader. Plus, he does boxing, you know, so that's cool. He's like Batman, basically. Um, <laughs> but mm-hmm. yeah, so yeah, I, I agree with you. Like, voting does matter because it's like you, you might hate Trump, but it's like, but did you vote against him? You know, did you take the time yeah. to go out and like vote for some? Even if you say like, I, I get it though. Like, totally. Like the shit disturbers right before. Um, this all happened. I mean, like, even, like, fun fact, I've been saying this for a while. I don't know if I t- said it uh, live or to you even, but me and Wob, we'd go on these walks, yeah. and then, like, when, this was, like, so many years ago, and then we were saying, like, oh, it'd be so funny if, like, Trump actually won, because it would be, like, what did that mean yeah, to the you, world? You, yeah, I remember you saying that to me. Yeah, so so it's, like, it, but now it's, like, okay, we had four years of it. You see what the issue is. It's, like, now we got to revote. you know? Like, I think that's what a lot of people were doing. They were like, they were sick of the establishment, which they were, you know, they wanted somebody new. So it's like, yeah. okay. But now it's like, if you, if he gets four more years, I don't even know what that means, you know? Mm-hmm. Do, do you see that thing in Washington? Oh, I, I think I told you this yesterday, but I don't know if you had a chance to check it out, but like the Black Lives Matter on the pavement. Yeah, I saw it. I saw it. Yeah. yeah. I thought that was kind of cool. Yeah, I thought it was super cool too, especially because it was commissioned by the mayor. It's like, okay, you're, you're... it's a, yeah, it's a, it's a bit of a slap in the face <laughs> to Trump, right? Yeah, so especially because kinda... Washington, right? So it's like, damn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was kind of. But like, it, see, I think yeah. things like that are super important, and like, like, yeah, with with all that's going on, it's it, like, so if you if. You have to look at the good and the bad, and it's just such a battle right now, right? Like, like speaking in Canadian terms, because we're Canadian, so, like, when the protests happened, you know, people were boarding up their stores, and, like, people were worried. We didn't have the crazy looting. Like, I mean, they were worried because of, like, social media. They're like, oh, maybe they're going to loot. But it's like, no. When they took the knee, every, like, the police chief or whatever, he, like, came and took a knee, too. You know, he's yeah. also black. I was like, whoa, you know? So, like, we don't have the same level they have there, you know? So it's important to to make that distinction. I mean, obviously, we do have it. We we, we have it worse for, like, Native Americans. Nobody's even talking about Native American lives, you know? Mm-hmm, yeah. So, like, yeah. that that I would say that's more of our issue, like, Native American reserves, you know, and all that. Like, what we did. Yeah, I, there, there has been some really, really bad like uh, history stuff around that like really really bad stuff <laughs> right totally and like i so, think we're like, like we're, uh-huh, yeah i think they were like uh, what i can remember if i hope i'm getting this correct but it's like they were like taking kids from them and like they put them into a school to kind of like reprogram their learning and no like, way wow yeah there was something like that yeah it was like some that's some really really bad stuff <laughs> yeah that's that's pretty but, crazy yeah but you know like so so, like, how far back do you want to go? You know what I mean? Like, I, but I feel like that's that is m- more of the Canadian issue that we're not really. Sp- I I know like that whole thing, but like all lives matter, and like how can all lives matter if Black lives don't matter? You know what I mean? But like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that yeah. it's important to remember that one as well. I I don't know. It's weird because like, it's like for me, I'm feeling like. I don't know how you're feeling. I'm I'm not sure. Like I would, I would like to ask you after this, but like um, I'm feeling like very uneasy. You know what I mean? Like like with the COVID thing, I was like, okay, whatever, sure, this is gonna happen. And then we're starting. Mm-hmm. Then all the stuff we talked about, all the changes. You know, it's like okay, this is pretty messed up. And then now like this Black Lives Matter thing happening, and it's like okay, now we're, you know, what's next? You know, like they they're making that joke about you know. 2020 was the craziest year ever like kobe died wildfires covid black lives matter what's next yeah. like aliens but then i was thinking we already we already released the alien footage so that's already gone you know yeah yeah so you mean what else is to come yeah and, and it's just like <laughs> it's it's hard to it's it, like i mean you know the sun doesn't come until after the rain so it's like maybe there's something good that'll come up like this could be the time that we wake up from it like are, how, are, how are you feeling does it make you feel uneasy or is that just me 
uneasy not necessarily i think that there it's uh like there hasn't been this level of attention around it that i think at this point it feels like there should be something must be done out of all this um in a better way i guess right 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 totally uh uneasy well i don't know like like with the covid and everything it's like are we going to have a are we heading into a depression? Oh, that's that was the other thing. I for, I totally forgot about right. that. Like, what but, happens after this? Like, the economy's still on shaky ground. You know what I mean? So, like, yeah. even that, you know, or or even another thing, like even like job security, right? Like, I've I've been a freelancer for so long, so it doesn't really like worry me uh, to like have like to have to figure out how to get income again. But like, it's weird how like revolving like contracts are especially with this like if you're if your company is is like reliant upon government subsidies and then if those subsidies go away then your job goes away it's kind of like so when's this gonna end yeah you know i mean that that's also another thing because like yeah job job loss is huge recession like you said it's like yeah yeah and then that it will impact everybody right i mean it has all at least this covid stuff has impacted the the minority community a lot more Mm -hmm. Um, yeah totally and uh, with the depression to come then it'll affect even more people so it's like and and i think uh, it's like global mm -hmm. anxiety is what's settling in you know yeah yeah it's uh, it was so funny because like right before so, like, I've always wanted to travel to Egypt, right? Like, I always thought that was going to be the end of my bucket list because, like, you know, mm-hmm. who who goes to Egypt, bro, you know? And then, like, when we did it in November and then this lockdown happened and then it's, like, how long before you'll have money to go on that trip again? How long before those airlines open up again, you know? How long yeah. before tourism opens up there, you know? Because it's, like, yeah, we might have the money here, but maybe their economy is, like, crushed even further so you can't go see the pyramids anymore, you know what I mean? So it's, like, it's it's living with that idea that, like, you know, I wanted that to be the last I, – I thought that was going to be, like, the last – sacred site that i would see and it's like oh my god is that the last sacred site i'm gonna see you know what i mean <laughs> right is you know it's what it seems like that in the immediate future um but people want some normalcy they're thriving to go back to normal right yeah so, but like but like what kind of normalcy i understand that but it's like i think i don't know when it'll be but it will be back to the point where you can fly again, right? Totally, yeah. It's it's that's inevitable that that of course that will happen. It's just like when will that happen? That's just that's all that I'm thinking about. When will that happen? That's all. It was like ten years, twenty years from now. You know what I mean? No, like, I, yeah, but I don't think it's gonna be that long. Yeah, ho- hopefully not. You know, because we. Uh, hopefully we not. Know. Yeah, I, I just feel like the, I mean, yeah, but a lot of things. I I feel like it could be. You know, I I don't know. Maybe in a couple of years, I would say. I I, but maybe I'm too optimistic. Optimistic. Yeah. <laughs> but that's yeah. That's just how I feel about it. Mm, totally. Without any. But yeah. yeah. I saw I saw that um, haircut places and restaurants are opening up soon. Yeah, this those stage two for Ontario should be sometime next week, and and those are included in stage two. Yeah. Oh, nice. Okay, cool. Uh, so that's good. why. Why those things are opening up that's what you're saying how many stages do we have like 15 <laughs> what's going on you know like <laughs> i don't know i think it was four or five stages i think oh okay cool i saw this thing um i think i mentioned it to you but like they were this uh ex navy seal and ufc fighter he was like if we don't see a skyrocket in covid cases after these protests we know we've been lied to you know and that's that's a big like they may all be they might all be asymptomatic but then what does that mean about yeah. our assumption about this virus, you know? No, there, that's one way to look at it. But it could be also that it was already spread through this, spread through the population prior to right, or during right, right, right. that they've already uh, had antibodies. That's also another option. Mm, true. I see what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah, yeah true. Right. You, you just never know about the science. And I feel like... I feel like it was way worse in our heads when it first started than 
it is and i don't now. feel like uh, yeah I, but i don't feel like they lied in that sense it's like it's a new virus that we don't know anything about our it's like as, was as information comes yeah exactly right? yeah yeah so like i think the future is is a mix of everything in the sense that i don't think everyone will be able to or will take the vaccine but it's like no, it's I'm one of those not taking that vaccine yeah i know i know but it's it's more like that's one of the uh uh, like uh, methods of um, fighting it mm-hmm. in a sense. So it's not like pushing it to everyone, but it's like if people are wearing masks and then if some people have taken the vaccines, it's like you would eventually uh, like kill the virus, right? Right, 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 right. It's like you're you're coming at it from two ways. We're wearing masks plus you have a vaccine. So it's like you're really trying to snuff this thing out. But it's weird that we don't do that with the common cold, you know? Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. <laughs> it's like it took a bit, but but also from from that perspective, it's it's like, I feel like, without COVID, we wouldn't have had the time to face these issues. So that's the, yeah, that's the thing. So like, that's what I thought too. It's like the the reason there's so much movement around it this time around, and a lot more people are out there mm-hmm. protesting is. A lot of them are also at home. Prior to that, it was like people were in either school or working, and they didn't have time to go out to these. I, I was just about to say that it's like it's like um, it's like you you would have seen it on TV, and you're like, "That's cool," but I got to get to my job yeah. for nine a.m. You know, yeah. and like yeah. nobody's or, willing. Yeah, I mean, exactly. But even the people working is like they want to go out, but they can't because they have to work. Right. right. Totally. Totally. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I get what you're saying. In support of the protest, so like now they have. Uh, like you know there's a, a lot of young people are getting involved because they don't have jobs right now they don't have school right now right and, totally um this is it was just uh, uh like you know it was just bound to happen in a way so yeah, yeah i i agree with you and like but then but then it creates like a displacement of people who just want anarchy and then people who you know really care about the issue yeah, I think, but again, it's like ninety percent of them are peaceful protesting. Totally, and, totally. Uh, but but like, why are why are you going to? But all right, no, no, okay. So even if it's like nine ninety nine percent, and you have like the one mm-hmm. percent that's like looting, and like, yeah, yeah. and like, the, do you see that video where they push the old man and then he hit his head and then he started bleeding? Yeah. So yeah. like, it's it's like, what this really shows is like your true character in times of crisis. It reminds me a lot of like groupthink, you know, like um, mm-hmm. the, the Nazis, right? When the, the Nazis started taking over um, all over Europe and stuff. And like, yeah. and then after they were like, why did you, why did you do that? Right. They were putting like, um, yeah. they, they were being questioned for their crimes mm-hmm. and they were like, oh, mm-hmm. it's obedience to authority. Yeah. You know, and like, I feel like some of the police officers kind of have that feeling as well. You know, it's like, I'm, yeah, just, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm just doing my job, you know? Yeah, even within that, there's been videos, mixed videos of, yes, people just doing their job. But then there was, within the cops, there was like, if one person reacted badly, there was another one that was, uh, like, good. Um, good, but in the sense that they would um, uh, talk back to, why, like, to that officer. No, totally, totally. Um, but, no, right, right, right. Um, but that, that's what I'm saying. It's like, it's like struggle shows you who you really are, you know? Yeah. And it's right. like when push right. comes to shove, are you that type of person or are you that type of person, you know? Mm-hmm. And like yeah. one of them is the guy who pushed the old man down and then the other guy yeah. is the one who reprimanded the guy that pushed the old man down. You know what I mean? It's like, and I think mm-hmm. like people haven't been tested in this way to show who they really are. It's like, it's like now you see who's really power hungry now you see who's really racist now you see who's yeah yeah hidden. exactly that yeah I, I feel like there's a lot more videos of police brutality in in these in this whole week than we have seen in a long time right like yes we, yes we, we can actually we're seeing what the black community has been talking about totally and i i've i've uh so like you know people are like oh i i get educated etc cetera, etc cetera. like i'm gonna spend this week educating myself but like um I've I've been listening to because they're so like they're so like wise, but I never really understood what they meant when they were saying it. Right. So like a lot of interviewers like like Vlad TV is a great one if you want to check out like um, 
interviews that are like uncensored with like mm-hmm. prominent black artists and stuff. Fun fact though, Vlad is white. So it's kind of funny. They make fun of him all the time. It's like, but you're accepted, Vlad, you know, et cetera, et cetera. But anyways, so um, it's funny because like when I listen to those, they, they've often been saying like nothing has changed since the Rodney King days. The only change has been like technology. So you're seeing it now. Yeah. Yeah. So like, yeah. Yeah, again, yeah, it, it's nothing has been changed. It goes back to voting again. I, but so like, okay, this is the thing. Uh, uh, like, actually, actually wait, like... wait, let, let me pause you there on the voting thing. Because mm-hmm. I saw that uh, there's this like, I don't know if you watched it, but I sent it to the group of like the um, the old white dude and he was giving you the history of North America. And I was like, that is actually so true. So like one of the things that I found when I went to um, Egypt was a lot of these like pharaohs well no they're not pharaohs sorry they're kings pharaoh is the house of the king so these kings were actually black so i was like how come you know like african americans are wearing these like egyptian like emblems i never got it because i'm like what what, like is that actually a thing because i mean like media shows me one thing so like why are you guys wearing this so when you go there you're like oh they're they're actually you know dark-skinned so it makes sense of the whole black royalty thing. And then that guy was giving a rundown of the history of North America. And he's like, he's like Portugal got um, clearance from Britain or something to go travel the world. And then he found North America and he's like, okay, let's kick these Native Americans out. And then we're just going to bring all of our, you know, uh, colonial yeah. people over. And then colonialism is what started North America. And then now we're yeah. in stage two of like he didn't say this part, but I'm seeing it. We're in stage two of colonialism where it's like a lot of us, like you and me are both first generation, you know, mm-hmm. our parents are immigrants and then we're the first generation in Canada. So it's like, you're seeing a second wave of not colonialism, but like immigration. Yeah. Right. So he's saying like you, the reason why there's systemic racism is because North America was built for Europeans right from the very jump you know so it's like Mm -hmm. so it's like we of course it's going to be like this you know and of course the media is going to portray their actors as like you know that uh, exodus movie when like they they had like and there's so much backlash because like moses was white and like the pharaoh was white and they're like what the hell is this you know so it's like it's like if if you started from the beginning and all you're doing is trying to make your world great for mm-hmm. the next generation cuz like think about it like we want to make our lives better for our kids right if if we have kids like i'm not playing one but like you know if yeah. if like so you want to make life better for your kid right and mm-hmm. then they want to make life better for their kid and then so on and so on so you're creating a system right yeah but in the beginning, it's like you were all European. So, of course, it's going to be in favor of lighter skin because they were the first ones here. If, if this was like, you know, like, let's we'll use your race. If, if the Indians were the first ones here and they would make it good for their kids and their kids and their kids, it's going to be like... Technically they, technically, they were, right? Indians first here. <laughs> I meant I didn't mean like Native American. Sorry. No, no. Hey, yeah, but you know what's funny about that? Like, <laughs> like, um, yeah, yeah. Uh, was it Columbus? He thought he was in India. That's why he called them Indians. Yeah. That's why Native Americans are called Indians because he was just confused. He thought he had made it to India, but he had made it to a different landmass, yeah. and he was like, "That just tells you what a fool he was." Yeah, totally. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. That's true. And like, and then like the Spanish, like they rape and pillage, like, you know, oh, yeah. this land. Yeah, yeah. So it's like, if you just look into history and I, I read like a lot of it, cause I'm fascinated by history. Cause if you understand history, you understand why we're here, you know? Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. And like, mm-hmm. it's super important to look into it and realize like, you know, when they're like, so like, it, it's sort of like this, you're, I just realized this. So when you, when you say like, oh, I'm going to educate myself, you know, like, like for this mm-hmm. muted campaign for one week, I'm not going to do anything except like, uh, stopping listening and learning or something like that. Right. Muted listening, learning. That's like the theme. Mm-hmm. But if you're not learning about history, 
then you're not really you're like jumping into the middle of the conversation you know what i mean like these people are like oh black lives matter and it's like totally but that's like we've been here for a thousand not a thousand years but like however long america has been around right and it's like you're jumping later into the conversation, but if you look at the very origin, you'll have a greater perspective of the world and you'll be more tolerant naturally because you'll understand why we're here. Because right now you're looking at it like you versus me, right? But that's because you think it's separate. But then remember that BBC video, like um, The Great Human Migration? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I found like a great one minute um, migration video that I'm going to post on Instagram when I start posting again. But like we all started from Africa and then we spread out, right? So it's like if you if you understand that concept, then there's really no difference between you and me. Like you're Indian now and I'm Filipino now. But like if you trace our line, we all come from the same place. Yeah. You know, so it's like so how can you have separation? You're jumping too late into the conversation. Just understand how we got here. And then you'll naturally build tolerance through education, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I think, I think, sorry, sorry, last point. I think that's what people need to do when they say, like, oh, I'm going to educate myself on this issue. It's like, no, just look into history. Like, if you look into history, you'll understand what's going on, you know? But we, yeah, we've I been... think that's, I think that's what it should be um, explained as. Like, education, yeah, but education means, on what that though? Includes that includes right. history. Totally, right. totally. So it's like if you start yeah. educating yourself since like the Rodney King thing, let's say, or like Martin Luther King, you know, oh, mm -hmm. they were slaves, so they came over here, and like now we enslave them, et cetera, et cetera. And then, you know, it's it's not systemic racism in terms of we there was no conspiracy, you know. No. Yeah. It, it just happened. It was a natural process of evolution, and when we look at it in this moment in time, the snapshot, we're going to have a distorted view, you know, mm -hmm. it, it's sort of like a good example. So, um, however, how, how long has the universe been around? Like trillions of years, billions of years. Yeah. Something like that. So, so let's say, let's say a trillion years. If you, sure. if you were around at the beginning of the trillionth year, you'd be like, Oh, this is what the world is. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But then if you zoom up to our time, trillion years later, you're like, oh, this is what the world is. Mm -hmm. So which is correct. You know what I mean? You're, you're having a distorted viewpoint because you didn't look at the trillion years. You're looking at the snapshot. Right. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, but that also, the only problem with that too is like it makes me feel – even though I understand this and you're like, okay, you're going to build tolerance, you're going to understand it. I still feel anxiety because it's like you are – the entire system is leaning towards one way. You know? You may you may understand it, but you're not, you're not a part of that group that started mm -hmm. it, you know? So right. it's still – you still have like barriers. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and, and uh, Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. It it takes years, I think. I feel like it takes maybe generations to because it's always about the the new way of thinking, but the new way of thinking to flourish, the old way has to go, right? Yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure, yeah. And I think that's what we're seeing right now. We're seeing like a changing of the guard, sort of, so to speak. You know? Yeah. Because like it really does feel like the world we had post twenty twenty is not here anymore. No. You know, and like, yeah, Um. so like T.I. Uh, on his podcast, he was saying that he had this great line and I was like, oh, that's so true. And obviously, like, we didn't feel it to that extent, like you and I, because we're mm -hmm. not we're not Africans, but we we still feel it to a degree. So he was saying, like, to his son. Uh, touch the top of the door and the son's like oh that's easy dad and he like he like stretched touched the top of the door and he's like great now you're gonna have to touch the ceiling because for other people it'll just be the top of the door but for you it's always going to be the ceiling you know like you're gonna have to try harder than everyone else right you know and but i mean obviously like th think about being a celebrity you want to be an actor right 
the difficulty to get into that sphere is so hard, right? But like for people who are already actors who have like a body of work, they just have to touch the top of the door. So it'll always be there is what I'm saying. Like there's always going to be like in-group, out-group um, hurdles. Yeah. yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah, that's... But I think, yeah, it, it, it's it's there for everybody, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah. I I find it also um it's like kind of like a separate it's more about the protest, but I feel like it it's almost like hypocritical, not hypocritical, but it's like like you're creating injustice in order to seek out justice. Do you know what I'm saying? About, you're talking about the riots? Yeah, yeah, like like all of it. It's like, it's like, collecting mm-hmm. together, rioting. That in itself is an injustice, you know. Spray painting things, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, that's the thing. I think it, there's gonna be people that want to do that, right? It's not. It's not. They are different from the protesters, right? In, like, uh, I've seen videos where, um. Like within the peaceful protest, if someone wants to start something or spray paint something or break something, I they think it would stopped. Yeah, totally. It it would be stopped or actually told to the cops that this guy's trying to start something. Oh, okay. So so that's good. Yeah. So that is what I'm saying. Like where ninety percent is peaceful, then there are these people that are just want to create chaos just because they have nothing else to do. Right. <laughs> right. 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 Yeah. So, and yeah, that is like what do you do with looting and 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 rioting um well the answer is again it's policing again right like well how else do you stop that right totally yeah yeah. so you need the police just as much as you like hate on them yeah yeah it's it's weird so, that's so, why uh, yeah yeah i mean it's, it's it's crazy with the it's the whole curfew thing too Oh yeah, yeah. That's that's like basically a militarized, like that's like it's a, it's it's like a martial law. With martial law, yeah. Oh. Or, or or that's almost like you're like veering towards totalitarianism. You know, you're like okay, yeah, that's the first step, and then the next step is you can only purchase at this hour, and like it's very much, yeah, very much so, yeah. Yeah, it's yeah, it's weird. So, um, you didn't watch the Jeffrey Epstein thing, right? You didn't finish it, did you? What what episode did you get to? I don't even think I finished the first episode. Wow, is was it? Is just straight boring to you? Yeah. Okay. All right. It wasn't like it is. A, uh, like it, it is a very um, uh, like sad or bad stuff that happened. But I just 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 like the, I think it was just the way it was filmed was not a way for me to. Um, it didn't like capture your attention. Capture my attention. Right. Totally. I I get what you're saying. I was just looking for the information. So like. In it, it shows like Epstein. So like this goes back to, you know, systemic issues. I'm not gonna say racism because it's like it's not really a race issue, but it's like there's always systemic issues like corruption and all that. So like um, Epstein, he so basically what he did was he was taking these girls that were had some sort of victimization or they were like very susceptible to mm-hmm. issues, and then he would he would ask he would ask them to um, like, I'll give you $200 to give me a massage. Right. So they, they'd like go over and they'd like start massaging him. And then he'd like, he'd kind of like force them into like sexual acts. Right. Mm -hmm. So then what he did was he's like, if you bring a friend, I'll give you a free $200. Like, so you'll make $400 if you bring a friend. Right. Or you could just stick with $200. You, You just become my goat, you know, and you like bring, you heard me a bunch of like people my way. Mm -hmm. Right. And so he, so think of it like a Ponzi scheme, you know, when people are like, Oh, do you have any friends that I can present this to? And then they get a Mm -hmm. kickback. If yeah. yeah. So basically that's what he created. Like that's what, that's how they described it. It's like a, like a, like a crazy sexual Ponzi scheme ring. So that, Mm -hmm. that was on his end. That was his business end. And then on the other end, you have all these famous people like Bill Clinton, uh, Donald Trump, um, Prince Andrew, yeah. they, they were all, they were all utilizing his services. 
um, Prince Andrew got caught for it. It was just so whack because he was just like, oh, I don't remember that photo being taken of us. But mm-hmm. he's he's in the photo. You know, it's weird. <laughs> so like, and he's like posing in the photo. It's weird. So like, and they never like, they never accused Trump and they never accused Bill Clinton, but they were saying like, you know, they were around. So it's like, why are you going to be around this person? You know? What what could you possibly gain by going to his like, and they also like so like I think Clinton denied going to his island, his like sex capade oh, island, and then yeah. they and then they showed the logs where he signed with a signature like he visited that place like twenty times or something. Yeah. So it's like, okay, what is this? You know, and then like if you look into other things like, like how um, American made, and then like they were bringing the cocaine through Arkansas, and then. They were mm-hmm. selling it, and then you get further into it, and like the the government was selling to the drug lords and the people. They were spreading cocaine in the system through like the minority system, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. like they were the biggest dealers within yeah. their own country. But then you have the war on drugs, so it's like, okay, what does this mean? So what I'm what I'm trying getting at is like if you really look into the to- total of history, like the whole sphere of it. You're like, it's so corrupt. And even in that, it just makes it harder to, like, how are you going to battle against it, you know? It also sounds, like, ridiculous. It sounds ridiculous. Like, if I told you this without a documentary or, you know, backing evidence or interviews and stuff like that or, like, books, Mm -hmm. movies, you'd be like, no, that's impossible. Right, right. Yeah, 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 You sound like a conspiracy theorist. Yeah, yeah. You know? So yeah, yeah, he was that powerful and that I guess influential to these. Yeah, totally. But like, what does that mean about the system? You know, the system's broken. The system's corrupt. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. the whole idea of trying to get money out of politics. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Totally. Totally. But I mean, like, even even like with the founding fathers, right? It's like, I mean, again, this is America. This is not Canada. It's different. <laughs> I don't even know the history of Canada. Because like, because there's no issues, so we're not like, like I'm sure we're dealing with issues, but we're not like it's not like in your face, you know. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But like, so so with that, like the founding fathers, like they owned slaves too, though. So it's like, mm-hmm. you know, what I mean, like f- again, from the jump, you have issues. And yeah. And, what- uh, what yeah. was the, the well, I think it was Dave Chappelle. It reminds me of Dave Chappelle. It's like oh, yeah, I know, I know the joke. They were, they I know were the joke. Yeah, <laughs> the thing is like uh, all men are created equal. Okay, uh, like to slave, like get me something. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. No, he, he was. I just watched that. It's so funny. He's like, he's like, uh, yeah. hurry up and finish that constitution yeah, yeah. and bomb. Yeah. And I was like, oof. <laughs> but I mean, yeah, like, and and then you hear it, and you're like. Oh, Dave Chappelle's like making a ridiculous joke. It's not a joke. He's like, he's a genius because he looks into history and then he just presents history in your face. If you watch the Mark Twain Award, uh, I forgot what the word was. Do you remember the word what his mom said you should be? So in in Africa, no. so in in Africa, there are these specific people that like they're they're like in high high regard. That like ancient times though. Um, right, they're, yeah, yeah, they're yeah. in high regard and like what their job was was to trans transmit history to the rest of the tribe. And like so you passing down history, right? Mm-hmm. And and like when one dies, he said like when one dies it's sort of like a library has burned down, right? Because they had so much knowledge. So like yeah. his mom was like, you should be one of those people as you grow up. You know? Right. And like so like when you when you listen to Dave Chappelle's jokes and stuff, it's like it's not, it's it's a joke with truth, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's just yeah, trying to make I it like funny, them. you know. So because because like I, I consider like edutainment, you know, like nobody likes entertain. Uh, nobody likes education because like oh it's so dry, you know. You got to read all those books, oh whatever, whatever. But edutainment is like you're entertaining yourself while learning, and I think that's yeah. what he is, you know. Yeah, that's what he exactly is. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's weird. But like, okay, so like going into what one of the things that I thought was very unique about the situation is is a lot of the things that we So I, I heard this like um you you oppress us like African Americans, you oppress us, but you steal all of our culture. 
you know? Yeah. And it's like Elvis took his took his uh, style from African Americans, um, you know. Yeah. Uh, then Elvis became like Jimi Hendrix, you know, and and then you get mm-hmm. like punk rock because I was like because I was thinking about it like like streetwear again African like it's it's like very cool like they have a very intense cool factor you know yeah 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 so you know like Fifty Cent. You know, you like mm-hmm. 50 Cent. Um, I like all these rappers now. And like, and, the, and I was thinking like, oh, but as a kid, like I liked punk rock, right? So it's like, no, that's not, that's not, you know, Af- African-American influence. But then I was thinking about it before the podcast and I was like, it is. It, actually, if you trace it all the way back, Jimi Hendrix is the one who started distorting his guitars in a way that would provide us with like um, crazy riffs for the songs, you know? Mm-hmm. So it's like, it's like it's embedded and yet they're being they're not elevated they're brought down yeah you know yeah 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 but but again it's like (laughs) it's funny because it's it seems more like a 2020 thing that like you and i are acknowledging this because we looked into it right so like we're acknowledging it but like more traditional you know like you and I are both Asian, right? So like if you go more into the tradition of being Asian, like dark skin is not coveted, you know? So even there it's like, it's because, you know, we were, we were also colonialized, you know, Britain, yeah, Britain, yeah. Britain took over India. Um, uh, Philippines was taken over by the Spanish and Americans. Mm-hmm. So it's like, it's within that system, their systems as well. You know, yeah, this is yeah. good and this is bad, you know, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah I mean, yeah, it makes what, what I'm saying is we're, like, we're not exempt, like, we're, we're talking about this from a 2020 yeah, yeah, yeah. perspective where we're educated and knowledgeable enough to acknowledge what has been happening, but mm-hmm. like, I don't want if you're like, listen to this and you're like. You're like, oh, it's so great to be Asian then. It's like, no, no, we have it in our system too. Like, you know, a darker Filipino person is going to be looked down upon as opposed to a lighter Filipino person, you know? Yeah, yeah. It's the same in India, so. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying. Exactly. So, it's, but like, but also for different reasons, not necessarily because of that, but it's just if you were darker, it meant you were in the fields and you were poor. Yeah. Same kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, um, uh, yeah. I don't know, like, where did that even, even like within Asia, it's like, how did that start, or like the idea that that was there before probably even Britain came there. I would think. Yeah, no, no, totally. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Yeah. Well, okay, for you, Britain. Awesome. I, I was gonna say, like, I was like, but the Spanish took us over. So I don't really know pa- before Spanish time, so. Right, yeah. So what are you going to say? No, no, no. That, like, I'm not sure, yeah, even what was it like before also. but Like, like when did when did dark skin become unfavorable? We don't know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But I, I, know it, I know it wasn't like, it wasn't because of your race, because they were all the same race, so it made no sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, no, it, was, it, it was a poor and... Uh, rich thing. Cla- is this the class system? Yeah. Yeah. Class. But it's it's funny because like now, it's funny how like things change, right? Because like before, people were like, "Oh, if you're darker, you're in the fields working," whereas I'm in the house and like I'm lighter mm-hmm. skinned so I didn't have to work. But now it's like in 2020, we look at it. It's like if you're pale, do you just not go outside? You know <laughs> what I mean? Like it's like I pref- yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd rather have a tan because it's like oh, it means like you're you're soaking up nature, you know, different perspective. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Weird, weird worlds. It's I, a weird world, world time, weird time. We're, yes. Yes. Weird world, weird time. I think maybe that that's great. And that's going to be the pod. I was thinking the podcast title was going to be uh, the state of affairs, but I think that's funny. Weird world, comma, weird time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. 
Yeah. Did you get finished it, Jeffrey? Oh, yeah. It was yeah. only like four episodes. I was hooked, man. I was like, how is this guy doing this? And then like, oh, so here, here's what's crazy. Um, I think we'll leave it on this. So like, I don't know what we're going to talk. Like we're like, hopefully I want to get back into tech, you know, and like video games and stuff. But it just, it really felt not, it felt tone deaf to do that. And then put out this podcast, like was the first thing I'm like, I'm going to start promoting oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, video games. So you're like, what? Course, yeah. You just didn't pay attention, you know? Yeah, of course. I mean, that that's the thing. Yeah, it's like with everything that's going on, you can't really not talk about it. Yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. Okay, so um, the uh, like we'll see what happens in the coming week. We might have to do another one of these recaps if something crazy happens. I don't know. Do you have a prediction? I'm, I'm going to save my Jeffrey Epstein thing for the last thing. So do you have any predictions for when this is going to end? Or what do you think? Like, do you think laws are going to change? I mean, laws are changing already because, like, um, they did get um, – not laws are changing, but, like, things are changing because they got uh, charged with higher charges, those four police officers. Yeah, yeah, the four police officers, yes, uh, and the main guy of it all did get a higher – but, uh, yeah, that is, that's one thing, what I'm saying. Like, where there needs to be systemic change in the sense – Totally, yeah. Uh, like – to uh, to lessen police brutality so that's used to have i i think what we're looking at is like prior to 2020 it was the colonialism era right and then now post 2020 it's the immigration era because like mm-hmm. a lot of them are now first generations who are speaking up like these a lot of these millennials are probably first generation you know you don't have yeah. that many generations prior to you you know? Yeah. 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 So, um, okay. So the Jeffrey Epstein thing, crazy. So when they, what they found out was, um, so basically he was just running an underage, uh, pyramid scheme brothel, right? Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. That's essentially what he was doing. But then the crazy part is, and this is how they ended it. So, okay. All right. So this is a mind blow, dude. Okay. Okay. Um, this is why it was so good. So, you know how they're like, oh, Jeffrey Epstein committed suicide? They get into this. Mm-hmm. So he got charged with – this isn't even new, bro. He got charged back in like 2009 or 2006. Something. Yeah, I knew about that. So, okay. But the case had been going until he got arrested because they were trying to convict him. But what they wanted was that anybody who is associated with you, like all conspiracy, all conspirators named and unnamed can be charged. Yeah. So what does that mean? That means you can indict, you can look into Clinton, you can look into Andrew, you can look into Trump, right? So when he went to jail and he allegedly committed suicide, his brother was like, there's no way Jeffrey Epstein committed suicide. Like, especially Mm -hmm. like it, it, so the prison that he was in, they housed like terrorists. So like what, what the craziness is the cameras weren't working and the people fell asleep. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like, how does that happen in a place? That's, with... that's why exactly. That's why there's like, everything was set like, as if like uh, set into place for something like this too, like in the sense of the murder, uh, not a suicide. But... Yeah. Yeah. So, so then his brother Epstein's brother didn't believe that he committed suicide. So he hired a lawyer uh, no, sorry, sorry, sorry. He hired a, a detective, and that okay. detective found out that from the way his his like neck broke, like the, there's there's like a, some cartilage the way it broke. He's like, he it could never have broken in this way if he hung himself. Right. Like, it broke in a way that like he was killed, like he was like choked mm-hmm. or something. Okay. Right. But why would you want to kill him? Because if he went to trial and he was convicted, then they can look into your conspirators named and unnamed. Yeah. Makes total sense, right? Yeah. And what's even crazier. Wait, hold on, wait, wait. It's even crazier. Okay, okay. So they ended off with, they ended off with that talking about like, like his conspirators should come to justice. That's I'm mm-hmm. I'm kind of worried for the documentary people because like they're about to be killed you know like what's going on, so like how can you just straight say that you know anyways so then one of the one of the witnesses was saying how 
so like when the FBI went in, the, the descriptions, the description of the mansion he had in New York was spot on. It was like perfect, right? So right. they knew she knew what she was talking about, right? Mm-hmm. So she said that there's also a lead, a lead protected room in like the basement or something. And she went in there one time and it was just TVs, right? Like old school yeah, TVs. Yeah. He was yeah. recording everything that was going on in that house. Yeah. That, that's what I was about to say. Like, but I think he has a record. He does. But they don't know where those tapes are. Because that room was emptied when the <laughs> FBI got there. Right. right. What does yeah, that mean? Yeah, yeah. I knew a lot about the what exactly happened. Uh, I just didn't like uh, like the story or like uh, where how how it started all right. But like I, I uh, like I knew very high people were, were involved. involved. Yeah. yeah, yeah, crazy, bro, crazy. Yeah. And then you, uh, well, one last thing that was kind of gross that Andrew Prince Andrew said is um, he's like so so the one of the underage girls she was. Um, she was the one like testifying in the dock and then mm-hmm. she was saying how like um one of the things he said was like when he first met her right like so they they, they went to a nightclub they like had fun they danced and stuff and then they went Ugh. and she was like oh he was sweating all over me it was so gross sorry it was so mm-hmm. gross right so they mm-hmm. go back to the the townhouse where they were staying and then jeffrey epstein jeffrey epstein's wife was actually helping orchestrate this entire thing with him. But she denied everything. She's like, no, I don't remember any of this, blah, 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 right? So Jeffrey Epstein's wife, um, she's like, okay, you need to go do what you do for Epstein, but to Prince Andrew, right? And then the Mm -hmm. thing thing that was gross is like, the thing that happened before they went out to the club is he he was like talking to her like normal. And he's like, oh, how old are you, blah, blah. And she's like, or no, 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 his his. Epstein's wife was like, guess how old she is? And then Andrew was like, 17. And then she's like, oh, how do you know? And then he's like, oh, I have a daughter your age. Yeah. And it's like, okay, what does that mean, bro? And then you're like, yeah. and then you did this? It's like, that's a little <laughs> weird to say, like, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's mm. very whack. It was it was a very whack doc. It I know that he got a lot of backlash with that interview. Oh yeah, in, in the interviews, like I don't, I have a condition where I don't even sweat. I don't know what she's talking about. Like I, I have a, I have a medical condition where I cannot sweat. That's yeah. why they hit him. The queen hit him away. He's not coming back up for a long time. Oh really? Eh? Oh dang. Yeah. After that interview, well, it was kind of like showing what he was like, but it was bad. Like. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you're cutting out like super heavy again. Yeah. Oh, all right. Well, <laughs> all right. Well, perfect timing because we hit, I think we hit over an hour, including the first part. So, uh, but yeah, so you're saying like Monarch System hit him away. Yeah, like the Queen hit him away after that interview. I think he won't be coming back for a while. Yeah, yeah. It was, long time, yeah. it, it was a weird too because like um uh it, in that interview he did it because he wanted to like like he he wanted to do the interview right he's like okay i can like, yeah, yeah, yeah i can like yeah. get out of this and then it backfired and like people were more like no you're even more shady than we thought yeah <laughs> yeah so it didn't work it didn't work but yeah so um it's important to realize that Looking into history is what's going to really educate you, not just looking at the snapshot. And, like, I mean, it's it's systemic from the jump, this systemic issue. Yeah. 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 Any final thoughts? That was my final thought. I was just, like, summarizing. No, I think that's it. I mean... Yeah. New World 2.0. Get ready. Get ready. It's happening. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Till next time, uh, pick up some teas and or accessories at zenrealclothingco.com and check out the free playlist if you don't want to spend any money. Um, there's a lot of dope ones. I'm working on more ones coming out. Um, oh, I didn't even get into this. 
Oh no, no, I, I did get into this about the the uh, the black the black culture like influencing yeah. style. Um, yeah. But I just wanted to say because it reminded me, and when I said like I'm creating more playlists, um, and I said I was going to talk about it on the podcast before we started, but um, remember like the man's not hot and like I was mm. really into the the um, oh what's it called the the gentleman rappers i'm really into like british rap it's like super cool it's just like super hip right and then i always i always heard that like like skrillex he went to europe and took some of their style to bring back to america and same with like asap rocky he went to europe because they're like the cutting edge of style and like Mm -hmm. because of soundcloud it's giving me like suggestions and i've just been adding them to this playlist that i'm going to release once i have enough songs on it but um it's it's really cool like I I feel like like the British rap scene is so underrated in North America. But of course cuz we're looking at North American rap scene, right? But like they're mixing like like chill step on top of rap with like a bunch of lingo that we're going to pick up on, you know, later for sure. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. You know cuz like one day like ASAP Rocky's going to go there and then he's going to come back and he's going to bring like a term and then that term is going to blow up in America and Canada. But it's like, mm-hmm. but no, they've been saying it for like years, you know? Right. Yeah. 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 Anyways, that was just my final thought. All right. Till next time. Take it easy, Vish. Peace. Bye.